welcome to my first look at the Starlancer Max. There will be some comparisons to the BLD as well as the Starlancer TAC. But in particular, I believe I have the firmest understanding of the Starlancer Max of the series, especially because it's going to be the more uh, <laughs> probably going to be released within days uh, or, or at the very least by the end of the year at the latest. I firmly believe that the Max is something we, we really need to focus on and also we have the most information on. As I said, I will use comparisons to the BLD and to the TAC when necessary and also point out some nuances to them, at least to the limited information we understand, especially when you're talking about the BLD. Thank you, middle and subscribers, for sticking around. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. So at CitizenCon 2954, uh, that took place in our timeline 2024, uh, there was some interesting discussion about a brand new ship, the Star Lancer. And in this, there was a ship that was long term going to be released, a ship in the near term that was going to be released in 2025. Uh, and then also uh, possibly even the first quarter of 2025, if plans go the way they're, they're pointing. And then also a ship that would be released in weeks after Citizen Con, at least if everything goes the way things are planned. And it brings up this interesting nuance to these type of series of ships, a brand new set of ships that are basically oversized freelancers that have become like a whole new thing that's even bigger than a constellation. So, I mean, jumping up is considerably in size. And they also even bring out a brand new variant dedicated to a gameplay loop that we still have not gotten into our hands. And I'm referring to construction. Now... Once again, I'm focusing on the max here, but it does bear the mention that the BLD still retains some of its cargo capacity, 128 SCU, which is nothing to sneeze at, as well as has the drones to build. And I wanted to point that out because a lot of, I think a lot of people picking up the Starlancer Max are thinking, oh, I, 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 need, I need resources to carry to outposts to build and such. And uh, you, the Max may not be for you if you are able to fit enough resources in to build with the BLD to a reasonable size with uh, what appears to be large drones. Now, what you see on your screen here now is the Starlancer TAC. Uh, so also at CitizenCon, as I talked about, the near-term ship is the Starlancer TAC, slated for the start of 2025. Uh, and with the tactical version of the Star Lancer, there is a Fury hangar on the top. You can see it between the turrets, uh, the dead center of that of that concept art. And once again, pulling this back to the max, you do not have said hangar. You do not have the interior spaces that are tied up by a dropship area for for uh, players to exit out of uh, through their seats being dropped down, and you basically build out a large cargo area instead and instead of a lot of this area and additionally long distance crew at quarter areas that are, they have a nice big room on the middle we are going to go into that room in just a moment that basically showing what those crew quarters are in particular on the max each and every crew member has a full-on hab that has a rest has its own hygiene with, it, with its own restroom attached and that's kind of unheard of uh, on, on many ships. And the TAC uh, does gain some benefits, gains an additional size three shield, so it's double the amount of shields. However, they have not said on any of the, of any of the Star Lancers what the armor is going to be yet. And it's, I take it as they're pushing the fact, look, it has a second size three shield. That's a serious thing, because the, the other ones only have one size three shield. And that is what they are banging on. Now, as we watch this video that we had at the beginning, again, you can see the Star Lancer Max, or well, back to the Max, uh, the, the nice interior that it has, which is a major selling point for it. An entire pool table, a little bar. Uh, I joked with Mason about this. I said it's like as if it's the, uh, the industrial phoenix, basically. The interior is that nice uh, for what it is. And it carries a significant amount of cargo, which is its job. And not just a significant amount of cargo, because it, it, it has the bay that both of the other two enjoy, but also a forward bay that you will see in a moment, 
it, it has a trick up its sleeve. So it does not simply have the cargo in a place. The cargo in the, in that bay they keep jumping back and forth to uh, deploys out the bottom sides, as you can see here. And that means that you in that walkway always is retained. On the Q&A, they stated that they confirmed that that is actually the way it's going to be, where there is a walkway so you can constantly go back and forth, a lot like the Hull series, which is kind of interesting that they retain that kind of concept. And I thought it was kind of a neat, uh, a neat parlor trick, but I realized it's something more than that, because somebody could be on that walkway with a tractor beam, like like a, a MacFlex or something like that, and be able to just throw stuff back and forth off of sorry Max lift, uh, all, off of the off of there. And I don't think you could squeeze an ATLS up there on that little get on that little walkway. You probably could, but it won't look right. But <laughs> um, you probably want to do that from outside just to you know, to kind of guarantee it won't like start getting weird uh, on physics. Uh, but you could use a two hand tractor beam or even just a simple multi-tool and be chucking uh, cr crates and cargo off the sides. You could even set it up so, oh, on the left side of that cargo bay is delivery one, right side is delivery two, because this thing has enough cargo space, you're starting to get to a point where, especially when you're delivering to outposts, they may only need a couple sensitive uh, parts, uh, replacement parts for specific things, and 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 um, uh, things that basically are very basic. You know, a small amount of ammunition to replace their stuff from their from their missions they ran, or from this defense they had to do uh, of the outpost, and then additionally dropping off goods and modules. And you you could right size what you're doing when in that main cargo bay. And that means that you can still carry a significant amount of cargo and also still have the rear bay, which is still open to having vehicles. And that's a key nuance here that you don't sacrifice all of your cargo space to fit those vehicles in the back. You can see through the window, the little CSV was peeking out. That was supposed to be, I guess, a hint to us that the CSV is coming. But the little pickup truck that could... Uh, it is quite nice. Now, I want to mention one more thing about the Max is that it may not necessarily make you unable to construct. In fact, it won't. Uh, you can bring the CSV's uh, 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 variant that, that that is designed to build, and you could still build, but you just can't build to the scale that the Star Lancer, the BLD or the galaxy with its construction module would allow you to build to that scale. And when that when those come out, uh, these the smaller ground vehicle that is designed to build and construct is is to a, to a to a lesser scale. There's there's like a extra small, small, medium, large type building array or small, medium, large, extra large um, type building scale where the pioneers at the top and all the way at the bottom is just a push cart that hovers and then you deploy it and it turns into a tower and it builds the gantry. There's tiny little drones that come out of that thing. Whereas the cart seems to have more of those drones and then the BLD has bigger drones and then the Pioneer has even bigger drones. Uh, it, it seems like that's the direction they're heading. And that is actually a big question mark. So the BLD, uh, the variant of the Star Lancer that they keep going back to with the construction stuff, is designed to carry drones and so it takes up a significant amount of its space on the interior to wield those drones but if you're building smaller scale and a lot of stuff i think that the star lancer max with its better interior for its people better cargo bay storage and, and such uh, may be better for sustainment because you need fuel to fuel the generators you need uh, which can be cargo cargo ties if you see here this is the interior look at the Star Lancers. And when you go through this entire space, I can't help but see a lot of potential. I feel like, it just once again, this is a first first look video and such, but I feel like the, um, the way the cargo is handled is actually quite good. I like the layout of the ship where it's a double floor ship and it feels very mature of a design. It, there's no wasted space. It's not like the old days. They have a lot of windows. It feels like a, a phoenix inside, especially for the Max when it comes to the crew. And the crew on ship, on, on the ship, on the vessels that are not as uh, designed for the crew, 
like the TAC, for example, still have a ton of amenities. Now, the TAC has a medical. Neither of the other two, as far as we know, because they could turn around and say, oh, the BLE's got medical. I doubt it. Um, has a pair of tier three beds. And they may change the ability to do regen in the future because that's didn't used to have that. And also it has a limited distance that it will operate the medical from. Because back in the day, people with Carracks used to troll people that stole their Carrick uh, by just respawning over and over again from across the solar system. Um, and that created a whole bunch of a mess for everybody involved that basically there was these uh, pushes. There's an armory in the front there, by the way, right right by the cargo, suit lockers and, arm, and like a small armory. It, it, once again, well thought out ship. I think, once again, we have to test it, but... I think having suit lockers, armory, right near your airlock makes a lot of sense. I do want to mention, I, as I've said on other ships, I picked on the Zeus's, so I have to pick on this one. Uh, if you have the suit lockers in the same room as where the airlock opens, and it, if, if, if CIG decides to start uh, volumizing air, where it sucks all the air out of that room when it, when, it, when it hits hard vacuum, and there's no air shield on that specific ship, then it will be hard to get your suit on to go outside because <laughs> you'll be standing in hard vacuum. And if you're not already in a suit, like trading the suit in the suit locker for your suit, and it's just hand wavy that you just instantly change suits, um, it would be really interesting to see where that would end up in the grand scheme of things. But let's go more in depth about the Starlancer Max specifically on that layout. And I think we're, we're on the right track here. So this ship was a truly vision to be multi-crew or have MPC crew that you're looking to support by having enough HABs to support them. You can see here that the bridge is side by side at the front. And then on a ship like this, traditionally, in a lot of cases, the other crew members are kind of set back a little bit when they're on the bridge. Uh, and then when they're not, they're wandering around the ship on the other two stories, working through replacing relays, managing the cargo, and checking to see if the turrets are working, getting food, setting up things. You can see the pool table area at the center, as well as the bar on the left-hand side. So pool table on the right, bar is on the left. And then right behind there is the HABs. Now there's hallways that are wrapping around on the left and the right. I've always complimented that having redundant hallways is a nice touch. If you have a ship problem, like such as a hole on the side of the ship, you can go around the other side. However, these are not like contained hallways with like, you know, blast doors or something. So it, you vacate the entire thing to air. It'd be less protected, but it is what it is. Then you can see that rear cargo area. So as we continue back the other direction, on, the, on this other floor, the lower level, you can see the engineering space. Now in the Q&A, they said most of the modules on the ship are in this engineering space. So if you have a friend or you have uh, the mindset of having a NPC crew member in the future, they'll be able to just be placed in there uh, or your friend will be able to run that area and manage a lot of the things from there. Additionally, there's the walkway on both sides, on the left and the right, as the main cargo area that has the drop-down cargo areas that has the, the neat, neat party trick, that is. And then in front of that is some of the areas that we need to talk about, which include the armory, the suit lockers, and your hidden, uh, on, on the right-hand side there, your hidden uh, uh, docking system, your docking collar expands out of there into your uh, air, airlock area, I'll call it that room. I think we need to start thinking about those rooms a little differently because to me, uh, it's not just a hole in the wall. It needs to be thought about like this is an important thing because if, if, if you're opening it up to another ship that's pressurized, that's great. But if it's a damaged ship that has no, uh, no, ha no, 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 pr no life support systems working, or if it's to the vacuum of space, you're going to recover things and you don't want to open up the large back, then this is where you're going to go in and out of. And that entire room is now, in, is now <laughs> at the very least, temporarily out of oxygen. 
and it can be exposed to high uh, high heat, high cold, low colds. I, I just, I just, I feel like um, we need to take these a little more seriously. And I wish I'd see more ships that had like a, like a, a double airlock system where like the one the one collar part opens, you go inside of it, and then that back closes behind you, and then only then does the exterior door open. Unless CIG decides to give every single ship uh, air shields, and air shields like that bluish hued uh, coverage, that, like you see it in the entrances, uh, you see it on the prowler, and the idea is that you, when the doors open, yeah, uh, you're still protected from the elements and from lack of oxygen, and still retain the oxygen is still retained inside the ship. So, and you, but you can still walk through it uh, or pass through it with a small vehicle or ship. So it is interesting uh, what this kind of ship is. I think it's going to be hard limited by the amount of ground vehicles it can carry. I still think a lot of people are going to be looking at your C2s and your M2s to kind of be the backbone of delivering a large amount of, sh of vehicles, especially without capital ships here yet, because we've already covered the Polaris and the Idris and the Kraken uh, all can carry a significant amount of ground vehicles. Um, in different roles, the Polaris and the Idris in particular with the ramps have a very nice in and out factor for that. Heck, even the BMM uh, can carry some pretty reasonable amount of ground vehicles if you're willing to sacrifice this, the, vertical, the vertical cargo area uh, to a certain extent um, in its main cargo hold. But none of them are in game yet, right? So we have to talk about where is the free, where is the Star I'm <laughs> the Freelancer Max. Where is the Star Lancer Max in, in, in the lineup right now? I see it as the, one of the, mo the most promising ship out of the three. I feel like the Star Lancer Max is an excellent price point at 225 USD. You're coming in at with the, with a war bond. Uh, it's a nice little CCU game upgrade, and you can kind of test the waters and see if you're going to get something else later on with that, with that CCU if if that's part of you, how you play. Um, in the in the near term, I think it'll still hold up. It has enough cargo space to truly make it worth my time. And the fact that it can roll the cargo so simply into multiple places is nice. 224 SCU for a ship of this size is very good. And it has a lot of VTOL thrust capability. It has actually extra thrust designed to carry all that extra cargo around. So it's, once again, a very maturely designed ship. It's meant to go planet side. It's meant to go moon side. Perfect for outpost work. Can you construct with it? Yes, but you have to bring another vehicle with you. And I'm sorry to uh, kind of rug pull there you a little bit, but that's how it is. And it still features a size 3 shield. Now, with master nodes and the way size 3 shields operate, it does take some time to recharge up that shield, and it only has a single shield. But it's still a size 3 shield. It's kind of it's going to be hard for a smaller ship to penetrate that, especially as we continue to see balancing between the smaller ships and the multi-crew vessels. It's, it's not going to go into a brawl, but that's not the point of the vessel. It is scrappy, and I like that. It is able to carry a lot, and I like that. It's incredibly utilitarian and simple to run. I could see a group of, say, two folks running this ship quite fun and having a good time doing it. And in more dangerous territory, you might want to bring a third. And that's kind of where my place is with this ship. As long as you're comfortable with that, and uh, don't get me wrong, if you want to go solo it and, and, and hard run it, go for it. But grabbing a couple friends or org mates and rolling out... Is going to be a heck of a lot of fun in this ship, especially if you have a wonderful goal of building new empires together. And to me, that's pretty awesome. Take your size four guns, take your size three missiles, and go have some fun. And go find that horizon. And you know what? Build a small base there. I can't fault that at all. The ship is built for the people that want to use it for utility, and... At the end of the day, you know if this is the ship for you. You knew that before you clicked the video. Alright, that's going to do it for me for tonight. Once again, thank you to my long-term subscribers. Y'all have a wonderful IAE. Hope to see you out there. 
Uh, November 22nd when this ship rolls out.